Hi, I'm Carl Amundsen, CTO of Vispa Marine. Today we're going to walk through more of a high level overview of the handset, walk through how to navigate through it and show off some of its key features. One of the focuses of the handset design was making sure that the use of VHF, DSC and AIS is tightly integrated into one cohesive user experience. It's super simple and easy to use. You won't find deep menu structures on the handset to initiate DSC calls. You won't be forced back into certain screens to use VHF functionality. All of that functionality is available from anywhere on the device. The menu structure is very simple. We've broken it into the standard operating screens like plotter and VHF and instruments view, and then situational screens which are designed for that particular situation. For example, in man overboard or a collision avoidance where we only show the information of relevance to that situation. The plotter screen intuitively prioritizes targets with relevance to your situation. You can simply tap, simply tap the touch screen to select the target and bring up its details. You can also access that functionality via the click wheel. The plot of view makes it really clear which vessels you need to worry about and which ones you don't. We do this for a number of means. One of them is color treatment. So vessels that show in red are ones that you should be paying attention to. We also use the vessel icons. So at a glance, you can see the type of vessel and the speed it's going. We show vessel vectors. You can simply touch the vessel to bring up its name and its range. Touch it again to bring up more details. Right here, you can go to functionality like making a DSC call or figuring out how to avoid them. You can use the click wheel also to navigate through the targets on the plot of view. Simply rotate and select. All of the targets that we're picking up over AIS can also be viewed via the directory view. You can think of this as like a contacts list on your phone. We show all the nearby vessels as well as what you've most recently communicated with and if you want to save a vessel as one of your buddy boats, you can do that too. The directory view is prioritized in an order of relevance. So any vessels that are in alarm state will automatically go to the top of the list. Any vessels that are nearby you and could be of a collision threat are then next. And then ones that we don't deem are really a risk, we put at the bottom of the list. From here, I can also find them on the plotter. This is an example of how we switch between views in a really intuitive way. The Cortex system is also connected to your NEMA network or to 0183 sensors. Any sensors that it's connected to, you can view here on the instruments view. Simply choose which ones you want to see and then lock it down. At any point, you can always go back to the VHF screen simply by hitting the VHF button. Now the VHF screen is provided there for the VHF functionality like dual watch and choosing a preset. But to operate the VHF, you don't have to go back to the screen. You can do that from anywhere on the product. For example, in my plot of view, if I need to make a call on 16, I can simply reach over and hit the push to talk. On the VHF screen, we provide some conveniences the call sign is displayed, your call sign, so that if you have to make one of those calls, you can just recite it directly off the screen. Also, we show the position that you're currently at and current UTC time. The VHF screen is simple by design. We just show the functionality that you really need. Dual watch can be accessed by simply touching the screen. Presets can be easily accessed too at the bottom of the screen. Add in a new preset. It's very straightforward. At any time, if you need to get back to 16 in a hurry, simply tap the 16 button. If you want to toggle back to where you were, hit the back button. We do provide some control of the VHF system, changing your transmit power, adjusting your squelch level. But for the most part, Cortex just does that stuff for you. At the top of the screen, we have our global status indicators. No matter where you are on the device, 
You will always see what channel you're currently on and whether or not you're transmitting high low power. Remember at any time you can hit the push to talk and you're talking. We show your current VHF system status, whether or not you're actually currently transmitting your AIS position. If you want to, perhaps you're fishing or in a secret spot, you can put yourself into stealth mode. We show so other subsystems like GPS health and any alarms that come in will always be accessed from the status bar. For more information on Cortex, visit our website vespacortex.com. Today I'm going to work through some of the design considerations of the Cortex H1 and H1P handsets. The Cortex handsets are both available in the wired H1 version or the portable H1P version. Both actually communicate wirelessly back to the M1. For the wired version, it means that all you have to do to install it is find power. The Cortex handset has been designed for comfortable use both in single-handed operation as well as when you're holding it with two hands. The handset itself has been designed for that harsh marine environment. We have features like the rubber overmolding that is both on top and bottom which protects it in a drop situation, as well as on the back for anti-slip. It's also the way we achieve its ceiling, which is an IPX7 rated device. The LCD screen is a capacitive multi-touch screen, which provides normal gesturing for pinch zooming and panning. Not only is it designed for wet use, so when water droplets land on the screen, it won't self-activate. When they are on the screen, you can still use the device, it's also designed for use with gloves on. Because the screen is completely optically bonded, the viewing angle that we can achieve and the sunlight readability is second to none. The screen is also made from Gorilla Glass, which means that it's super tough. One of the things we've also included is an ambient light sensor. Now this allows for automatic turning of the display into night mode and dimming of the brightness. For single-handed operation, the rotary click wheel and the dedicated buttons provide ease of navigation. All of the core functionality and device navigation can be achieved through these buttons. All the critical functions are right where you need them. We have DSC calling, changing my channel to 16, or dropping an MOB waypoint. Also on the back of the device you'll find the DSC distress button which allows you to initiate a DSC call in a distress situation. The audio quality on the handset is nothing like your cell phone. Its super loud volume of 85 dBA means that in those windy days you can hear it. We're going to walk through using Anchor Watch on Cortex. The Cortex system is designed to alarm you in an anchor drag situation. The alarming logic is actually running on the M1, which means that in the middle of the night you can power down all your displays, all your handsets, and you'll still be notified if there is an anchor drag. Before you drop the anchor, we provide some relevant information, your current speed over ground and current depth. This helps you decide when to drop the anchor and how much road to put out. Dropping the anchor is as simple as just clicking the center button of the click wheel. We show your past positions through what we call breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs are a nice graphical feature that show you how you're actually swinging on your anchor. Once you've dropped the anchor, we show range and current bearing to anchor. The apparent wind angle is shown. And wind speed and wind angle are things you can set alarms on as well. If your vessel does start dragging, when it breaks the alarm radius, it will trigger an alarm. When an alarm occurs, the alarm appears in the alarm banner. The ring goes red to indicate that you have dragged outside of your set position. And this is useful for um, when you're on the boat, but it's also really useful for when you're not. And so that same alarm um, will also be sent to the alarm monitoring app, and so you'll be notified when you're ashore through one of the advanced safety features of the Cortex system the dedicated man overboard functionality. The Cortex system allows you to activate a man overboard alarm either manually using the dedicated control on the handset via the NEMA 2000 network from another device on the network 
or automatically when receiving an AIS man overboard position report. To manually activate a man overboard, simply reach over and tap the man overboard button. Man overboard. This will immediately drop a waypoint, which is the position of when you tap the button. We provide a convenience for how to navigate back to that waypoint, an easy graphical illustration of which way to potentially turn to get there quickly. Dropping the waypoint is one thing, actually receiving an AIS man overboard device's position is even better. The Cortex device will receive that automatically and change focus away from your waypoint and onto that man overboard device. Now we've got the man overboard's actual position that we can navigate back to. You can also bring up his details. Here it shows me his actual lat long. It also shows me when we first received a message from him. So we've got an idea for how long he's been in the waterfall. And con for convenience too, we show the water temperature on the same screen. We're gonna walk through a collision avoidance situation. This is really gonna demonstrate how tightly integrated the functionality of VHF voice DSC and AIS is in the Cortex system. When the Cortex system recognizes potential for a collision situation, it will alert you. Collision alert. Okay, so a collision alert's coming in. Right now I can collision simply alert. click the alarm banner and it takes me to that situational screen dedicated for purpose to avoid this target. Right here, I've got everything I need to control the full system. I can push to talk, I can change my channel, I can go back to 16 quickly, I can also make a DSC call directly to the target. Because it's a collision situation, we assume that the category of call would be a safety call. The last channel that you use is the channel that we populate. You can go and change that if you wish. Simply tap on the call button to make the call. We show the target's navigational lights here, which is really useful at a quick glance to know that in this situation, you're the give way and he's the stand on. We allow for a trial maneuver. This is a convenient role play situation that gives you an idea of if you do steer to a certain direction, of how that's gonna affect the situation. You can see how the vessel's color is changing to indicate that he's no longer a collision risk. The vector lines we show on this view are relative to you and how you would see the situation standing on deck. At the bottom of the screen, we always show CPA and TCPA. The vector line indicates how that vessel is gonna move relative to you standing on deck of the vessel. And we draw a dot at the end of the vector to indicate what the actual or the position of that CPA. And this gives you a, a nice graphical display of the passing situation, whether or not he's gonna pass behind you or in front of you. I'll show a little bit more detail around the M1 of the Cortex system. We will show the Smart AS functionality, its Class B SO TDMA functionality, and some of the other unique design aspects. The M1 is Cortex's connectivity hub and smart alarming system. You can think of the M1 like the brain of the system. The Cortex-M1 is an IPX7 rated housing. It's made from a thermal polymer, which means there's no exposed heatsink. All of the M1 inputs and outputs are also completely galvanically isolated. It's designed to be run from a 12 or 24 volt system, and it's designed for super low power, which means that you can leave it on at all times. The five core systems of M1 each have their own status light. We have the GPS, VHF, which is DSC, AIS receive and transmit, as well as VHF voice, Wi-Fi, NEMA 2000, and cloud connectivity. The status LEDs will be green when the system is fully functional, amber when something's not connected, or red when you need to troubleshoot something. The M1 has a single VHF antenna port. That's your primary VHF port. It also includes a built-in splitter, so if you've already got an antenna installed on the vessel or an existing VHF system, you can integrate the M1 into that. The M1 is powered from 12 and 24 volts, but it's really low power, drawing a maximum of six watts. 
So that, that way you can leave it on at all times and it's always monitoring the situation for you. It includes internal uh, antennas for both cellular and Wi-Fi connectivity. But we've also allowed provision for certain installations where you need to get those antenna to a different location on the boat. And so these external options um, for connectivity of an external antenna. We have a sensor port for connecting external sensors and um, relays. This allows you to monitor things like your high water level sensor, your bilge pump, or control things on the boat like maybe your heater or freezer box. You can do all of that remotely using the monitoring app via your phone. It also has built-in NEMA 2000 connectivity. This allows for those sensors that are on your vessel connected to NEMA 2000 to be monitored as well, but it also does a classic Smart AS functionality of translating NEMA 2000 to 0183 and distributing those sensors via Wi-Fi to anything else you might have on the vessel. The audio port is included, which is both a audio port for VHF receive, but it's also our primary alarming port. So when a Smart AS alarm occurs, the annunciations for those alarms will be received over that port. This allows you to power down your handsets, but still get notifications of alarms. It also has a built-in heading sensor. This is really important, super useful for our anchor watch feature, as it enables accuracy of your anchor position. It's also very useful for when you're transmitting your AIS position. The M1's cloud connectivity allows core features like our smart AIS alarms, bilge alarms, high water level sensor alarms, to be accessed from anywhere, whether on board or ashore. For more information on Cortex, visit our website, bespocortex.com.